Hi and welcome back to the Captain's Deck. This is the Keyforge Team League round two game between Karen Brown and Emperor Riku. Two Team Swindle uh, members, uh, co-members uh, for me. Um, the teams that we're talking about here are um, Karen is playing for Ember Storm, and then you have the Anti Alliance Alliance for the Emperor Riku's team. Let's have a quick look at uh, both of these decks. Then Karen is bringing a Grim Reminders deck. It is VA Vincent of the Hyper Boathouse, and with Geistoid Mars and Star Alliance. The cards that we have to look out for here, obviously we have the Ecto Charge, um, BR Geist, uh, which is a really, really fun game, fun card. Uh, Grim Reaper, the Reaver is also a really strong card there. Haunted House, uh, even Dark Memento there as well. Um, being able to discard and get to that Ecto Charge um, pull there. So uh, that's going there. You also have a Dr. Xyloflex, um, which is a really strong card, and Triple Retro Technician Lee in Star Alliance, um, amongst many cards. Em expected Ember of 23, Ember Control 9.1, and a pretty quick deck of 17. And the new stat that we see here, which is the... Uh, the chances of being haunted, the haunted odds at nine. So that's quite a, quite a high one there, um, and quite a few cards there that need to be haunted. Uh, need to be haunted as well. Going over to Riku's deck. Riku is uh, bringing uh, Try Me Toy Sock. Um, apologies for the pronouncing there, but it is a Winds of Exchange deck and a very interesting deck is indeed it's not as quick um, it does have a higher um, ember expected ember um, it has higher ember control and it has some uh, artifact control which is interesting though it's got three copies of bubbles uh, fathom reaver a lat gaboon double befuddle so a lot of disruption there in unfathomable Sanctum has got some really good fun ones there as well. Uh, Lady Lorena, Grey Rider, and of course, we without forgetting that we have the Squire as the token there, so whatever he gets out, he's got a good chance of protecting as well. In Mars, you have uh, Double Iron X Rebel, so play in ready members. Crystal Archive, um, gaining extra after um, Creatures Reap. Mars needs Ember, a really, really strong card in Winds of Exchange. And um, yeah, so 15.5 is the token generation score there. Both have two, um, two board clears, uh, board clear cards. Uh, Moni Clouds Catch Release, and uh, Karen has a Plague Wind and Quintrina Warp there as well. So um, similar, similar stats there. Um, with this matchup, but let's get in and uh, see how they have started. See how um... so some interesting, an interesting matchup here. We'll see if Grim Reminders can uh, flex its muscles against Wings of Exchange, but two very strong decks. Um, I can't say what the uh, banning process was, unfortunately, but you know, we will see when we get there. Okay. So let's go and watch the game. Um, Karen is going first. And um, we do have closed hands here as well, as you can see. So um, there's no there's no seeing. Uh, I won't be able to comment on what they could possibly be do, which is quite interesting. Um, I, I always like to see what, at least from one player's perspective, what they could possibly do. But maybe we can't. So, yep, this is try the Captain Miku's deck there. Um, just taking a quick look at that as well. So, uh, Riku starts off. Um, be interesting to see what's happening here. Okay, so Karen starts off with Guy's story and plays the Dark Memento, which is the 
uh, which a very, very enhanced Dark Memento, I should say. Um, Dark Memento is, is the start of your turn. If you're not haunted, this card cuts up your top of your deck until you're haunted. Um, so she can just jump straight into being haunted, which is what she does, and discards um, a whole reaver. She discards a whole load of terrible uh, that Quintrino warp. So the quite a few key cards that she uh, discarded there. Uh, Riku follows up with uh, getting Lady Arena out and some uh, um, uh, some other cards. Going qu quite quickly here, we get another um, an another artifact out from uh, Karen. Karen played into the warp, um, destroying the Mars cards. Uh, we had the Resonator and the Harvester. Double Karen comes out with a double Retro Technician Lee, which is a very strong card. Um, and being able to, obviously being able to use uh, play stuff straight from your discard pile. So that's a really, really nice use of the um, Dark Memento there and bringing the, uh, you know, use, using your discard pile as your, as, as a little extra archive there. Well, more stronger archive, really, because you can't really do, um, just take any cards out of your archive. So essentially that's a lot stronger. So Riku, um, clears off the, use the Thunder Toe to clears up, clear out both Lees. Um, and so that's quite a bit. And then plays Befuddle, stopping Karen from playing Star Alliance in the next turn. So depending on what she, uh, or playing other cards other than Star Alliance. So she's forcing her into Star Alliance. Uh, Star Alliance, of course, she played uh, um, quite recently. So um, it might be a good play there. And she's thinking here for a little bit um, and actually pushing into Geistoid doing a bit of discarding, clearing a hand out as well. So the turn is not um, wasted completely there. Clearing out a hand and moving on, which is quite a decent play if you are on the receiving end of a an awkward befuddle. Riku uh, uses... Um, plays out... Oh, yeah, uses the summoner... Uh, fighting Dr. Zephrophilex, uh, which is a strong card. You don't want to make him reap. Blade Arena f also fights him to destroy and then plays out a nice big-ass battle line there. And uh, then Comarina to uh, capture most of <laughs> Karen's Ember, or all of Karen's Ember, I should say. Karen goes back over and plays Mars there, Distant Void Prober. Um... Making him capture one of his own ember. Plague Wind comes out and gives minus three power. Each non Mars creature minus three power, which kills off um, uh, some of the cards there to gain some of the ember back. Riku jumps straight into an unfathomable turn with uh, Fathom Reaver. Um, still on zero ember. Um, so he's struggling to. Uh, get off the mark there with Ember. Um, but these games are known to go quite... to suddenly burst. I think both both of these sets are known to burst quite quickly. At least Grim Reminders definitely uh, can uh, really burst within one turn. Karen's pushing uh, check, though, this turn. She's gone into Geistoid, um, Junk Restoration, um discarding uh Elliot Elliot um and then pushes into seven for check at the end of that turn Grim Reaper did come out um Grim Reaper is, I think it's a bug in TCO Grim Reaper always uh confuses me coming it when in looks like it comes in with Blobnar basically um uh, Riku, he pulls Karen off of check. Uh, I mean, Karen is one key, one key ahead, of course, uh, at this point. Um, but Karen uses Dark Memento again to um, discard a lot of her deck. Uh, 
because she wasn't haunted at the start of her turn. So she discards uh, many, many cards there. But she does go into the Star Alliance, bring out Breakfast Lishan Lee, and she's looking for the cast to play. She's used Sabotage Mission to increase key cost by one for each friendly creature during his turn. So pushing the key cost up there. But she has got back onto check for her second key. So she's pushing ahead there. Uh, second Retro Technician Lee coming out. Uh, playing the Grim Reaper again. Which is a really, really strong uh, combination there with Triple Lee and the Dark Memento. Because... Like so many turns, you can just basically almost pick like almost any card that you want to. Um, but only leaving half the deck in the draw pile, a third of the deck is in the discard pile. So, yeah, really strong combination there. She chops up to 11 in that turn, um, uh, giving Riku uh, a Bit of a hill to climb with his Winds for Exchange deck. So Grim Reminders is really showing its muscle in this turn. But also I think Karen's showing her muscle here as well. Um, with uh, yeah, I mean, these are both very, very good players. Um, and so if one person has the chance to get ahead, they will punish the other uh, quite easily. Um, two very good players that I do learn quite a lot of when it comes to the game. Karen forges her third, uh, second key, I should say, um, playing into the warp um, to discard, yeah, top player of each player's deck. And then she's gone and I think play, played uh, uh, Primitive Alarm. But she's killed a few... Oh yeah, so she's destroyed a whole load of creatures there using Into the Warp and uh, taken back some uh, of that Ember there as well, putting into check for the game. Um, wondering if Riku can do anything here. I mean, both decks are around. The, no, Emperor Riku can't do anything here. Concedes. Uh, Karen's won the game and uh, we'll, we'll move into the second game. Okay, so going into game two here, um, Riku sticks with his uh try um uh, toy sock uh his uh words of exchange deck karen chooses her her other unbanned deck and that would was oakhorn the senator of redberg this i have played against and been destroyed uh by this deck um so it's a um a pretty big deck there uh, so what she's playing with now it's a um uh, win where well, them a Worlds Collide, uh, Logos, Star, Alliance, and Untamed deck with a Ember, expected Ember of 20 here. No board wipes, um, but she does have double Edai. She has um, Song of the Wild with a ton of creatures. Um, uh, Star Alliance, uh, double Chief Garcia, Operations Officer, uh, Yishi, um as well as uh, Light of the Archons, Medic Ingram, Navigator Arlie, some pretty strong cards there um, as well. Uh, then we can't forget, obviously, the Neutron Shark in um, uh, in Logos there, which is pretty much a board wipe without being a board wipe in some ways. So, um, yeah, let's see if uh, Riku can make a comeback in this game. Okay, so let's get started with game two here. Uh, Riku goes first, plays out a Fathom Reaver and a Squire uh, protecting it there. And uh, a little bit of banter going on between there. Uh, <laughs> Good luck. Have as much fun as you want, but only a little luck. Good swindle team banter going on there. Uh, it's very, very odd seeing these two on the other side of uh, team competition, uh, but fun indeed as well. Karen plays out her um, aid eye. Uh,
but also plays that Tau Tau Vipers. Oh no, plays Twin Bolt Emission to get rid of um, uh, the tokens, the Squire there. Emperor Baldric the Bold followed up by Grey Rider, Grey Rider Baldric going in and hitting um, uh, hitting Edai around the face, and then obviously following up with uh, some Ember Gain there as well with Baldric the Bold. Baldric the Bold is a very, very strong card. Gaining two on attack, um, especially if it's their only uh, creature they're fighting out there. Getting ahead a little bit. Karen plays the Grasping Vines for the Ember. She plays that Mad, uh, Mad the Mad. Mystic Murmuk doing what she can to get rid of uh, Baldrick. And then a Cauldron Boil to um, get rid of the other cards there, leaving the Grey Rider out. And then obviously, there we go, Nature's Cool. But will she push the Grey Rider back into Riku's hand? Because that's always an interesting move. Yeah, she does. She returns everything to the board. Mab the Mad comes back out. Mystic Moonrock comes out and kills Mab, which is really good because obviously he's got to deal the damage anyway. Um, Mab the Mab comes back out again. Oh, um, it's from the regrowth. And then she adds the Instrument of Silence on there, which is the, um, the creature gain, skirmish, and fight gain one. So, Mad the Mad is not completely useless. Big turn, and in that she... <laughs> Karen actually boosted all the way up to 9 Ember in that turn with that uh, pretty, pretty big burst there. But, you know, that's just what Untamed can do. That is just what Untamed can do. So, yeah. Riku has got another hill to climb here. He is. He plays out the Sohog's Thingamabob. That's actually the name of the card. After your opponent forges a key, exhaust each creature they control. He's just got to be able to forge a key. Um, oh no, sorry. Um, yeah, Karen forges the key, exhausting her creatures, and then, yeah. Plays out a, a couple of cards and passes the turn back. Um, yep, Emperor, Riku, yep, again, Baldric, Grey Rider out. Uh, Gaining a couple more Ember, pushing up there, but Karen follows up with a big Star Alliance turn, getting some uh, big cards out there. Um, come off, sir. Um, you've got Chief Garcia and you've got an Ingram out there as well. So and warding the uh, Kirby as well. So um, that's a strong board that Karen's got out with a lot of control there, a lot of different stuff to do. And in this case, it's difficult to to kind of think what could he what but which if, if with not that many creatures on the board, he can only really probably kill one of those. He can't even kill one of those creatures, as I say, but which one should he be aiming for? Because the Ingram can fight everything. The Chief Garcia, I mean, the Ingram can ward stuff. Chief Garcia can do stuff, but um, yeah. But what he does do is none of that and plays Capture and Release to return all creatures to their owner's hands and discard down to six cards. So that is a uh, yeah pretty big turn. He then plays Bubbles. Um, Karen comes out with a Harmonia. There we go. R Riku plays the Harvester. Um, the after reap gain one, but has to be against there. But obviously, yeah, he plays them out. But the Iron X Rebel comes out, 
readying him and uh yeah give me you also put a uh, uh, uh Ironix propaganda is that after we make a token creature too. So um, he puts a token creature out and he puts it on the right side. So he's obviously got some plans to put something behind that in the future. Anyway, he pushes on to eight Ember. Uh, Emperor come, uh, sorry. Um, however, he didn't present, to f he wasn't able to forge there because Karen went straight back into uh, Star Alliance and used Garcia to push the key cost up again there. So Riku, he chooses, he goes into Sanctum there, um, getting out a pretty huge Winds of Exchange board, which, you know, it's kind of what it's known for. Um, they're kind of going pretty fast here for me to keep up with exactly what they're doing. But um, the Grim Rider, the Grey Rider comes out next to the um, Battlefield Evangelist there after fight make a token creature. It makes a token creature and then puts Baldric the Benevolent. Uh, no, not Baldric the Benevolent. Casale uh, the Benevolent um, out on the right-hand side behind them there as well. So he's got a few of the... A uh, few creatures protected there as well. Um, nice big board. What can Karen do to answer this though? She goes into Star Alliance, uh, playing Lay of the Land, um, seeing what she's uh, looking forward a bit there. Um, and then she's fighting away some of the cards. Uh, another Chief Garcia comes out, so there's two Chief Garcias out, pushing the key cost to 11. Um, it doesn't look like Riku is going to forge today, unfortunately. Um, Karen is really pushing that out. Um, Riku does normally have a couple of tricks up his sleeve, though, so uh, let's not rule this out just yet. Just while they're thinking here, um, we can just... Um, Karen is basically in check as well, because she's only raised the key cost, obviously, during Riku's turn, so that will come back down to um, a nice, healthy six key cost there for her turn. So, um, yeah, we've just got some waiting to do here to, fight, to, to see what Riku is going to do. He's gone into Unfathomable. So he's obviously got a big unfathomable hand. He plays out a uh, Thunder Toe, uh, which is exhaust two creatures, deal two to each ex or exhausted creature. So trying to do a little bit of damage there, probably maybe using the, the Garcias, damaging the Garcias, um, and then using bubbles to do that. No, he's actually gone for the... Of course, you've got the... Um, Melina, who's giving it hazardous as well, so he can't just um, hit into them. So Karen has set her board up very, uh, very well there, putting that um, uh, Melina in the right place um, to protect one of the Garcias. Karen forges her second key. Um... But then obviously having her creatures exhausted, uh, which means Rico is able to um, he is able to forge a key without Garcia being uh, being able to be activated there. So he takes his takes his first key of the game. Um, he's gone into Sanctum using Benet Castile to fight Arms Master Molina. Um, still staying alive. He made that token creature to protect Bubbles over there. And then he just looks like he's reaping out there and plays out. Colonel... <laughs> Colonel Mariana there, each friendly night creature captures one, but obviously Karen doesn't has just forged, so uh, unfortunately that was a turn too late um, with that turn as well. So 
A little bit unfortunate there because that would have been a really good stall up there as well. Karen goes into Star Alliance and plays Coking Donkle on uh, <clears throat> on the Summoner, Katarina the Summoner. Um, the it's an interesting move there, uh, giving um, uh, their neighbours elusive. She plays out Ishii, uh, play come off the Kirby out, um, gave him a house cheat card. Um, but she doesn't do any of that, but she does use uh, Chief Garcia to raise the key cost. Uh, but she does obviously push to five in this game as well. So um, very, very close to uh, taking check there for the game. Uh, Riku's turn, he's deciding which house as well. He does have board advantage here, but um, that Garcia is protected there and doing a lot of the groundwork to really hold Riku off uh, just here. Um, and the squires are, um, they have, they've been quite kind of useful here. I do enjoy, um, what squire can do in Winds of Exchange. If you can get your important cards out there and just get a whole lot of protection out if you need it. But it's, uh, I do wonder if some of the, um, uh, other key cards that Riku's had have been tokenized, uh, in this point. So. He goes with Mars to go Onyx Rebel, um, and then probably uh, gonna go with the reap with the um, Harvester as well um, to push on to uh, check there at least, putting the ball back in Karen's hands. But he plays another Rebel out. Um, possibly should have reaped with. Oh no, of course he couldn't reap with Harvester the first time. Um because Harvester was next to a non Mars card. So yeah, maybe that's why. But he did he did bring out he could have he was able to reap with Harvester with the other rebel. Um then he also followed up with an ammonia cloud um to clear some of uh, Karen's board. So he sacrificed a lot of his creatures. Um, but that's okay because he's also about to uh, cycle all the deck. Karen, although, comes up with cutthroat research in a Logos turn and pushes on to check with nine. So it's kind of up to Riku now to say, can he do anything about this? Um, or is this Karen's match? Riku goes with Crystal Hive to gain an Ember. Marcy's Ember to make... Karen, uh, Karen captured Ember to her own creature. The Resonator comes out, pushing the key cost to 8. He pushed the key cost to 10. Um, with Resonator putting, uh, and putting this behind it. So he is still alive. He is still in the game. Karen now see if she has any muscle there to do something about the resonator. Um, or can Riku creep back into this game? Karen plays Tata Vapors, uh, trying to uh, mill some of the deck, trying to get through the deck, and hopefully there's some. The Igor comes out, uh, Igor reaps, and then obviously Neutron Shark comes out. And that is a big play at the end there to, to at least just get rid of get rid of the I think the Batminder. I think it was that no not Batminder. The uh resonator. Um I mean there. And um Riku realizes he can't do anything about it and concedes, and that is Game, set, and match for Karen. Uh, big victory for both Grim Reminders and Worlds Collide. Um, a huge victory, actually, for Grim Reminders. They're completely uh, controlling the game there. It just shows the muscle that Grim Reminders does have there. But this was um, a great, great match. Great triad match between 
uh, two of the giants of the game at the moment. So, um, yeah, really good to watch. Pleasure to commentate. And, uh, yeah, so if you're interested in watching more of these uh, games from the Keyforge Team League, there's a lot of games out there. There are three, there's a feature match every week, so three games are being uh, recorded and released every week. This is round two. Round three is about to be finished as well, so look out shortly for those videos to also come out here soon. Um, but until then, forge on a prosper and see you next time.